Hey, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you guys are not building a media company or if you're not sending your around your company around building a media company, regardless of the industry you're in, regardless of what your specialty or niche is, if you're not basically focusing on uh, most of your marketing efforts as a media company, you are setting yourself up for failure. Give me a couple of minutes because that's what we're talking about today. Hi, my friends. This is Patrick Allman from Stop Doing Nothing. And uh, this week we're going to be doing more marketing than anything else. And specifically, I want to talk to you about a video I did in the past uh, that actually gets one of the higher search results uh, on my YouTube videos and on my Facebook videos. And it's the importance of being a media company and specifically how to start a media company. Last time I talked to you on this topic uh, was after I heard the wonderful Jay Bear speak at the New York Marriott Marquis, the one right off of Times Square. I actually did a video on the second story of the bar. It's back in my YouTube videos. Go look at it. I'll try to link to it from this video. But I was... At the time is when I had just basically started my own media company and I had gotten into doing the media like I'm doing for you. And then I watched Jay Bear do it and I learned how important it was. And from that point forward, I have learned and I have studied and I have tried to work on this and make this a key part of my company and for the companies that hire us for marketing. So I believe it is such an important part that today I want to reemphasize it and make a new updated video for you in 2018 and tell you again why I think you should basically be running your company as a media company. I've got a whole page of notes here and I want you to, first of all, find something to write this stuff down with or bookmark this video or subscribe or whatever because you're gonna wanna come back and watch this. This is important stuff and I'm not screwing around this time. Um, ever since I watched Jay Bear talk about it, ever since I've watched some of my other friends like Peter Shankman and, uh, and just to various people, Jill Schiffelbein, these are all great people on YouTube and great people I've seen and speak on person that have accidentally made themselves media companies and this is one of the things that I think can really be a game changer for your marketing and I hate that phrase, I don't say it too often, but I'm dead serious about this, okay? You ready? Time to take notes. The first reason, and this is something that I always talk about uh, why people should be doing public speaking or running a media company at all is the person talking is the expert. Stop and think about that for a second. It's very profound. You know what? I don't know if anybody else made it up before me, but it's something that that particular phrase that I use quite a bit. The person doing the talking, the expert. It doesn't matter if you work in tires, if you work in manufacturing, if you work in 3D printing, if you do woodworking, if you build houses, if you freaking make bizarre 3D light bulbs, it doesn't matter. The person making the videos, the person making the podcast, the person writing the blog post is the expert by default. They don't have to be the best person in that particular industry. They just have to be the ones talking about it. If you are the one talking about your industry, if you're talking about how you do it and your company and the people you work for, uh, I mean, that, that makes you the expert by default. That's probably the number one reason right there why I think you should be focusing on creating a lot more content and making yourself a media company because the person doing the talking is the expert. You ever go to a conference and there's like a thousand people in the audience and there's somebody that's like right in front of the front row that's facing the audience. So you've got a thousand people in the audience and then the presenter or the speaker right there in the front row facing the audience. The only difference between those people is about six feet. The person standing up there is automatically considered the expert. There could be a thousand people with a thousand years experience in the audience, but it doesn't matter. The one person up there is the one speaking and they are the expert in the room at that particular moment. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be firing up your video cameras and writing your blog posts and doing your podcast and getting people to hear your voice more. When people hear your voice more, they trust you more and they will believe you more and they will buy from you more by default. It's a magical formula. It's the reason we trust the news. We may not always believe them, but we trust them for the most part. Uh, number two, actually, my number second point uh, is trust. The more you are talking, the more people trust you. I know this may sound the same thing as number one, but it's not exactly the same thing. If someone is shopping and they, they come across two different companies, someone wants to build a home, for example, and they come across two different companies and both companies, everything is, is great for both companies for the most part. Both companies have a great website, they have great SEO, they have good listings on their, on their website for the houses they're selling. The, the business will go to the person that builds up the trust the most, the fastest. 
And the way you can do that is by presenting yourself in media. If the business owner or the salesperson or the office staff or whoever gets on video camera and does videos about each house, about each listing, about why you want this one versus another one, about how the company works, about the integrity and the morals and the ethics of the company, the person who has all these more videos on the site, you're gonna spend time watching those videos and you're going to trust that person more. So not only do you trust the person more, you're gonna spend more time with them and that's gonna make you trust them more. And the more you trust them, the more time you're gonna spend, spend with them. It's kind of a feeding circle right there. So trust is the number two item right there. Um, trust to tell you truth kind of segues to number three. The more time you spend with them, the more trust you build up, the more of a relationship you're building up. People, again, trust media companies. We trust the news. We trust CNN. We trust MSNBC. We trust these places to provide us, for the most part, factual information, some of it may be biased, some of it may not be biased, but by default, we trust the news. And that's primarily what news companies are. They are media companies that happen to sell advertising, but they are media companies first. You trust what the media companies put in front of your face, so treat your own business, whether it is making custom popcorn, or barbecue, or specialty spices, or cell phones, or your artwork, or your painting, or you, you know, sell vintage 1920s watches, Whatever that is, you should be doing videos, blogging, and podcasts on it, and speaking as the expert authority in there. Trust builds a relationship, they're gonna spend more time with you, you're considered the expert, and again, it's kind of a full circle there uh, going on. Um, the fourth one I wrote down here is, once you establish trust in this topic, again, let's get back to home building. Once you establish yourself as being a trustworthy company, and people believe you, know, like, and trust you, that authority is going to automatically extend to other topics. So for example, if you have a, a home builder whose YouTube channel you subscribe to and you watch every single minute of content and you cannot wait for the next one to come out, that home builder can now talk about other things and you will trust that home builder's opinion. That home builder, your company for example, can interview other experts out there and people will implicitly trust those other experts and those other products. So let's say that you're, um, let's not say you're a home builder, let's say you're a custom popcorn maker. Uh, if you talk all the, do all these videos about cu custom popcorn, then all of a sudden you start getting into other snacks, custom nuts, custom beef jerky, um, all these other things. By default, people will trust that you know what you're talking about in those other areas. You know, they will trust the person speaking about it from the original company, or they will trust the person that be, is being brought on as a guest or as a secondary expert. Because you know why? Why would the expert trust, why would the trustworthy expert have somebody on camera that they themselves were not trustworthy? So by default, you have this like trust extension. People hear you, they know you, like you, and trust you, and that trust is kind of like an envelope or a bubble that's gonna to extend to everything that you do. They're gonna trust the products you recommend, they're gonna trust the employees that are at the company, they're gonna trust your work, they're gonna trust the extensions of your work, just almost like I said, there's this bubble of trust that is gonna be built around every single thing that you do. And the more you have that bubble of trust, again, it's gonna feed back. The more you're gonna have a better of a relationship with your audience. Uh, and the more that people are gonna believe that every single thing you say, you must be an expert in. We, not only do we trust media companies to tell us the news, we trust media companies to tell us what products to buy. You know, why would somebody advertise a product on MSNBC if MSNBC did not trust that company and extend you know, the MSNBC bubble of, or sphere of trust, if you're a, uh, if you're a um, Get Smart fan, be the cone of trust or the cone of silence around that. Why would CNN or MSNBC or, uh, and, or any of the other ones, CBS, ABC, C, NBC, why would we why would we not trust everything they say? Now, we're not gonna get into the, the ethics of you know questionable media and media making themselves the story, but my whole point is is for decades upon decades we have trusted media companies and you yourself can become a media company no matter what you do, whether you sell laptops, custom cigars, custom beef jerky, flavor popcorn, uh, oak desk, it just doesn't matter. You want to build that trust and extend that cone of trust around everything you do. And the, um, let's see, what was I talking about here on the absolute last one? I wrote down random people. Oh, what's gonna happen is once you have this cone of trust out there and people are going to know, like, and trust you, you're going to get random people that are gonna come up to you on the street or wander into your venue or attend your events. And again, that trust will is to extend something in person but people are going to recognize you out in public and instantly trust you also. So you do a lot of stuff in the online world like me. You have a YouTube channel, you have a podcast, 
You know, you have whatever, and you have the online trust, but now people are gonna walk up to you in the real world and implicitly trust you. You may be at a coffee shop someplace or walking through an airport or on an airplane, and all of these have happened to me, I, I shit you not. I wouldn't tell you this if it wasn't true. I have had people come up to me on airplanes or at coffee shops or in an airport or, or various other places and say, hey, you're that Patrick guy. I've seen you on TV because I do a lot of you know real world TV media. I've seen you on YouTube. I listen to your podcast. You know, sometimes when I look at my podcast and it doesn't have the listenership or the volume I wish it would, I, I have to remember that there are people listening to it and those people are gonna go out in the real world and spread my message. And so I've had some random people come up and say, hey, you know that podcast you did three months ago on uh, XYZ topic? My, I listened to that, I made the rest of my company listen to that, that podcast kicked ass, and we took that tip you gave us, Patrick, and we're now implementing it in our business. Thank you, thank you so much for putting that out there. So you're gonna see that that sphere, that cone of trust, extends out to various things in the real world also. It's not just online trust building, it's offline trust building also. So as a quick recap, please make sure you write this down. The person talking is the expert. That's not the right piece of paper. There it is, it's right there. The person talking in the experts, whether it's public speaking events or producing media like you see me do here or just various other things, when you're the one talking about your particular niche, I mean, you own that freaking niche. Um, it's gonna build the trust. The trust is gonna build the relationship. The relationship is gonna to wanna to make, to make people spend more time with you. The more people spend, people spend time with you, the more trust is built up, and of course that trust is gonna to extend to other topics. So that's those three things right there. That's a circle we could draw. Uh, trust is gonna extend the relationship. The relationship is going to make more people spend more time with you. That's gonna make the trust extend to other topics, which is gonna build the trust on your original topic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm watching the camera right here and I can kind of draw a circle. I wish I had one of those sports things right there where I could sit there and just kind of draw, you know, here's the quarterback, here's the linebacker, they're gonna go down here. But whatever, you get the whole point right there. And the last one is that that online trust is gonna send into the offline trust. And by online, I mean uh, TV media, which I do some of, um, YouTube media, online video media, podcasts, blogging, all that online real world stuff is gonna extend on the offline stuff. Hey, if this has been useful for you, do me a favor, drop a comment, let me know you're listening. I don't really care if it's on, if it's you're listening to this on iTunes, go over to uh, and drop a review on iTunes and subscribe on iTunes and go over and watch the video on YouTube or on Facebook. I'm putting this up on YouTube on Facebook also. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe and watch the other videos and also go over and subscribe to the podcast. So do me a favor, if you like what I put out and you think it's useful for your business, go follow me in all the other places. And by the way, I'm always interested in what topics you want to hear from me, whether it's business related or personal branding related or personal development related. There's a couple of topics here which I've got a few decades of experience on that I can drop some knowledge on. So let me know how I can help you. I get a kick out of doing this and uh, you know what? I think it really does help other people's businesses, and that's what I'm in business to do, is to help you grow and build a kick-ass business yourself. Thanks for watching always, I love you guys, and I appreciate your attention. Take care, we'll chat again soon.